there. Uh, today we're going to be doing things a little bit differently. We're going to be learning not about a specific animal, but about nocturnal versus diurnal. So we're going to be talking about a few different animals. I do have a couple of our ambassadors. I have our barn owl ambassador, who's looking a little mad that she has to come out and do a program today, <laughs> but don't worry, she'll get used to it. <laughs> and then over here we have our red-tailed hawk ambassador. I bet you can't guess which one's nocturnal and which one's diurnal. <laughs> <laughs> we'll talk about that a little bit later. But first, I want to talk a little bit about the differences between diurnal animals and nocturnal animals. So a lot of people have heard the word nocturnal, which of course are animals who only come out at night. And diurnal animals are animals that come out during the day. There's also a third one called crepuscular, which are animals that come out dusk and dawn. So they're kind of in between. But for our purposes today, for the most part, we're just going to be talking about daytime and nighttime animals. Now, human beings, we are diurnal animals. We're daytime animals. But some of us are a little more active at night. So that goes, that's the same out in the wild, too. Even though an animal is nocturnal, that doesn't mean that they never do things during the day. <laughs> they can still be kind of active during the day. They're just mainly active at night. Um, and we're going to talk a little bit about some of the differences. I want to show you some of the adaptations that we find in nocturnal versus diurnal animals. So at night, animals have to be a little quieter because things are a little more silent than they are during the day. There aren't birds singing in the trees, you know, things like that. So they have to have ways to muffle sounds so they don't attract predators or to make it easier for them to sneak up on their prey. So here I have the wing of a red-tailed hawk. Now, the wings that I have here are from birds that were hit by cars and didn't survive, so that's why we have uh, the wings here. But I want you to notice these flight feathers. They have a nice, straight, smooth edge, a little rough because they're a little old. We've had them for many years, but for the most part, a very nice, smooth, straight edge. Now, hawks, eagles, most diurnal birds, when they fly, they make a lot of noise. So when they fly away, you'll hear that whoosh, whoosh, whoosh sound. Or if you're talking about a morning dove, you'll hear kind of a whistling sound. And that whistling sound is not a vocalization, it's actually the sound of the wind moving through their feathers. <laughs> so just a neat thing about them. Um, but if you look at the wing of a great horned owl, which is a very large brown owl we have here in Ohio, you'll notice there are these little fringes along the leading edge right here. And those fringes are called flutings. And what those flutings do is they allow air to move through and they allow their feathers to brush together without making even a whisper of a sound, which is important when you are hunting for mice with big huge ears out at night. You want to be as quiet as you can so you're kind of like an assassin at night. <laughs> that mouse doesn't know you're coming until it's too late. So that's a very important adaptation for these nocturnal predators. And most nocturnal owls have these flutings. Now you notice I say most nocturnal owls because there are some owls that are more diurnal or crepuscular, but great horned owls are nocturnal. Another thing you'll see, here I have a very beautiful close-up of a luna moth, and you'll notice these huge feathery antennae. Now that means this is a male luna moth. Female luna moths have kind of skinnier antennae. And what these do is they help the male pick up the pheromones of females. So even in the pitch black night, the males can find the females that they want to breed with and lay eggs and, you know, make little caterpillars with. Um, and that's important for them. Females don't have to worry as much about that because all they have to do is hang out and the males will come to them. <laughs> so they don't need the big antenna. Or here we have a flying squirrel. And you'll notice that this flying squirrel has big, huge eyes. By the way, guess what flying squirrels can't do? They can't fly, but we'll talk about that in another video probably. Um, but these big, huge eyes, you'll notice that in a lot of nocturnal animals. Lots of nocturnal animals have huge eyes and it helps them to take in more light so that they can see better at night. So many nocturnal animals have really excellent night vision, um, whereas, uh, uh, some of them have better hearing, some of them have better sense of smell, but uh, for these guys, that uh, night vision is very important for them. Now, what I want to do is I want to play a little game. We're going to guess which animals are diurnal and which animals are nocturnal. And when we're done with that, we're going to move on to talk about our little representatives that we have with us today. Although really, I guess they're not very little, they're pretty big. <laughs> but let's get started. Now what I have here, is a board. 
showing our nocturnal and our diurnal side right here. And you'll notice the diurnal is nice and bright and sunny. That's what we humans like, right? Usually most of us. <laughs> and then the nocturnal side is very dark. It's hard to see, but there are a couple of trees in here. But this is what it looks like even at night to us. It's tough to see. Now, we're gonna start off with a nice little robin. And what do you guys think? Are robins diurnal or are they nocturnal? Do they come out during the day or do they come out at night? And of course, robins are diurnal. <laughs> They're kind of the example of the early bird gets the worm. They're out pretty early in the morning, stomping around on the ground, looking for worms to have for dinner. Well, I guess breakfast. <laughs> so we'll go ahead and pop him right over here on a tree. So he's diurnal. Now next, I have this flying squirrel. And we already talked a little bit about flying squirrels, and so you should already know that they are nocturnal, which might be surprising because many of the other squirrels we know and love come out during the day. But a lot of people don't realize we have tons of flying squirrels in Ohio. You just don't see them because they are nocturnal. And then we have a great horned owl, so that wing we got to see a little bit ago. And of course, the great horned owl is nocturnal. So he's coming out at night. We'll pop him right over here in the tree. So you'll notice he has big, huge eyes, just like this flying squirrel does. And of course, he'll have the flutings on his feathers. And all of those things help him to survive at night. Now next, we have a beautiful monarch butterfly and monarch butterflies come out during the daytime <laughs> because they are diurnal and they need a lot of sunlight because they can see lots of colors that you and I can't see. They have a much broader spectrum of colors um, that they can pick up and that's to help them find all of those very beautiful flowers out there to get all of the nectar that they need to survive. So we'll pop him right over here, right by these flowers. Oops. And I do know that this is a hen because you'll notice he has little black spots on the back of his wings. Male monarch butterflies have these little black patches and females don't. So that's kind of a difference you can see with them. Now here I have a red-tailed hawk. And of course red-tailed hawks get their name because their tails are red. <laughs> but uh, these guys, what do you think? Come out during the day or during the night? Are they diurnal or nocturnal? And they are diurnal. <laughs> they like to soar around up in the sky. They have amazing vision to help them to spot animals way down on the ground. Now the next animal I have is a bat. And what do you guys think? Do bats come out during the day or at night? They come out at nighttime because they are nocturnal. And while bats are not blind, you'll hear people say, oh, she's as blind as a bat. But that's not true. Bats aren't blind. They don't have the best vision, but they're not blind. Of course, bats use what to find their food? They use echolocation, which is a really amazing thing. They just put out all these little clicks and sounds, and when they bounce back to the bat, they can tell if there's food nearby, if there are objects nearby that they need to avoid, lots of really cool things. So that's a really great adaptation for them. Now next, we have a fox. And you might be thinking, well, foxes are nocturnal, but guess what? They're not. So are they diurnal? Nope. <laughs> Foxes are one of those weird animals that like to come out at dusk and dawn. They are crepuscular. So we're going to pop him right here in the middle of our board. Or her. This is a girl fox. <laughs> All right. Next, we have a tiger salamander. And what do you think? Are salamanders diurnal or nocturnal? They're nocturnal. They're most active at night. Now, we don't even see them very often at night because they like to live underground. This is a tiger salamander. Um, but they are more active during the nighttime hours. That's when they make their big moves to go to the vernal pools to lay all of their eggs. <laughs> so next, we have a weird mixture. <laughs> we have a gray squirrel and a chipmunk. What do you think? Are gray squirrels diurnal or nocturnal? They are diurnal. They come out during the daytime and run around and collect all kinds of nuts in the fall to get ready for the winter. And the rest of the year, they'll eat everything from insects to berries to seeds. So they're, they have a lot of things that they like to eat. All right, so take a look. We have on the nocturnal side, bats, flying squirrels, tiger salamanders, great horned owls. In the middle, we have our red fox, which is found right here in Ohio. 
And on the diurnal side, we have the red-tailed hawk, the American robin, the gray squirrel, and we have the monarch butterfly. So lots of really cool animals that come out during the day and during the night. So now I think it's time for us to learn about our ambassadors that we have with us today. We're going to go ahead and get these off the board so they don't get fed up when I close it down. And let's take a peek over here. So over here we have our red-tailed hawk and we have our barn owl. So both of these birds are found right here in Ohio. Let's look at the differences here. We have our barn owl has a very flat face with her eyes right in the front of her face. We have our red-tailed hawk who has a very pointed face with her eyes kind of off to the sides of her head. And that's because both of these birds have different ways that they find their food because they come out at different times of night. So the red-tailed hawk, by having her eyes off to the sides of her head, she can see on both sides of her body, which is really amazing. And that helps her when she's soaring high up into the sky to keep an eye out for a squirrel or a rabbit or anything. It's way down on the ground. And in fact, if she were standing in a tree and she saw a bunny over here who was hopping around perfectly healthy at the same time as she saw a squirrel over here who fell out of a tree and broke its leg, which one would she go after? Well, she would go after the squirrel with a broken leg because it's easier to catch. Predators don't typically catch animals that are healthy. They catch animals that have something wrong with them. Now, if we take a look over here, we have our barn owl. And if you guys were part of our barred owl talk earlier this week, by the way, what she's doing is something called toe sweeping. She might start uh, dragging her beak along her toes to make kind of a clicking sound. And that's her way of saying, hey, don't come too close. This is my personal space. <laughs> she might use that to ward off predators, make herself look bigger. Um, but just like we learned about with the barred, B-A-R-R-E-D owl, <laughs> the barn owls use their hearing to find food. They have that flat facial disc that helps them to catch sound. Now, barn owls are like Superman among owls. They can catch even more sounds than any other owl. And because their ears are crooked, pinpointing that sound, their ears are way crooked, way more crooked than a lot of other species of owls. So they can pinpoint where that mouse is squeaking from and catch it without ever even laying eyes on it. And in some studies, barn owls have even shown that they can tell the difference between different squeaks from different species. So barn owls prefer to eat meadow voles. So if they hear a meadow vole squeaking and they hear a mouse squeaking, well, they're gonna go after the meadow vole, not the mouse. People used to not like barn owls. They thought they were bad luck. So if they saw them in their yards, they would kill them. But through education, people were able to learn that barn owls do a great job getting rid of all of the mice in fields. In fact, if they have babies to raise, they can make up to 70 trips, 70 successful trips back to their nest, carrying a mouse or a bull, which is important. It helps to protect crops and things like that. Now, barn owls are found in Ohio, but they're more around Amish country, um, not so much in our area up here in Northwest Ohio, because they prefer to live around meadows, because remember what they like to eat? Meadow voles. <laughs> Where do meadow voles live? Meadows. <laughs> so around Amish country, they have different farming practices, and uh, so there are a lot more meadow habitats out there. Not to mention, barn owls like those big old wooden barns, not the newfangled metal ones. <laughs> so they can find more of those around Amish country too. But you can see clearly there's a big difference between our red-tailed hawk and our barn owl. And it's not just because they're different colors and different sizes. It's because they have very different adaptations to help them to survive at different times of the day. She needs to hunt at night. She needs to hunt during the day. So they all have lots of really neat things that help them to survive. All right, as always, if you have any questions about any of the animals you learned about today or about nocturnal and diurnal and crepuscular and all those other weird things, leave a comment in the comments down below and I'll be happy to get back with you. Thanks guys for joining in and I hope you have fun.